Hello, this is Peter Richardson from Counterpoint Research, uh, and we're recording a Counterpoint conversation with Ali Carney, uh, Vice President of Automotive with NVIDIA. And I'm joined by my colleague, Matuza Ali, who leads our research into uh, autonomous driving and ADAS. We're live from CES, where uh, Jensen Huang has just provided a, a very interesting keynote um, including some new announcements from NVIDIA. So, Hallie, maybe as a starting question, can you just sort of introduce quickly what's been announced today from an autonomous driving point of view? Yeah, I mean, I think we made um, a few um, exciting announcements uh, for automotive. Um, the first thing is, is, you know, just like the large language model was the chat GPT moment of, you know, the agentic AI, um, segment, um, you know, a vision language action model with reasoning, you know, is the key software architecture for physical AI. Um, and we open sourced Alpamayo, um, our vision lang language action model with reasoning, and it's actually the first um, open sourced reasoning model available in the automotive industry. And it's critical to be able to handle the long tails because you're not always going to have data available for every kind of scenario. So you need a kind of model that can break apart a problem and uh, think through it um, and you know come up with the best trajectory even though if it hasn't seen it before. So we're very proud of it and we've open sourced it to the industry. We're gonna help um, you know the AV ecosystem build uh, level four capable systems with Alpamayo. And so that was one big announcement that we made. Uh, and then the second thing is, is you know, the level four platform, we call it Hyperion for us. It's just consistently growing in, um, you know, ecosystem adoption, you know, and so we announced at this CES that we have multiple neural tier one partners and sensor partners on the ecosystem, uh, you know, Magna, Bosch, uh, Denso, ZF are all building Hyperion systems and this, you know, adds on top of, um, you know, uh, Conti that, you know, I think now they've rebranded themselves, IU, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. uh, um and uh, Lenovo. So we have a sort of really essentially the who's who of tier ones building Hyper uh, level four capable systems using uh, two Thors. Um, and then also we have a sensor set architecture and we kind of announced it, you know, uh, in addition to Sony, uh, now, now there's um, Omnivision cameras on the platform, and then on the radar side we have uh, Bosch um, added onto the platform. Um, and so you know we have kind of a, and then we've also added uh, Ava to the lidar ecosystem uh, to come on top of a side that is already there. So you know we have a large mm -hmm. um, set of choices for partners to pick sensors from uh, tier ones, uh, and then we've gone and grabbed the best AV software companies in the world and got them to develop software on Hyperion. So, you know, whether it's Wave or Wabi, Pony, We Ride, Neuro, Momenta, uh, Deeproot, uh, ZYT, you know, all these guys are building level four capable software on our platform. Uh, we're helping them train their models. We're helping many of them uh, on the simulation side. So we're building up that ecosystem. Uh, and then now there's a bunch of OEMs who have uh, adopted level four capable systems. Uh, you know, we had Mercedes-Benz, Lucid, and Stellantis uh, announce at GTC just a few months ago in DC. Uh, and then now we just talked about a slew of uh, Chinese OEMs from BYD uh, to Geely to uh, Xiaomi, um, who are also building cars uh, based on the level four Hyperion uh, platform architecture. So we're super excited about that. So I think those are our two big announcements mm -hmm. uh, that we're kind of excited about at CES. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the video that, that Jensen showed with uh, uh, Drive Through San Francisco with Mercedes uh, was, yeah, very exciting to see. And I mean, it was interesting that a couple of times there were some Waymo cars that kind of appeared at the uh, you know, on the on the fringes of the of the video, but the performance looked looked really good. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, we launched our own stack, and we talk about this. We say we're a full stack company. What do we mean with that? It's so true in automotive. Uh, in that car, in the Mercedes car, um, we you know, it's using our chips in the car, our safe operating system, Drive OS, 
um, the entire application software stack from Active Safety to the L2 Plus driving and the parking application is developed by NVIDIA. We trained the models all on DGX GPUs and our software in the cloud, and we simulated um, using Cosmos um, to kind of create a bunch of scenarios and, and test in simulation. Uh, we built that whole stack and we took it to production in this car. So it's not like we have a bunch of depot code. Uh, the entire stack is in production and you can see it in that Mercedes-Benz car and we showed you that video uh, and we announced that now that stack is in production in the US and it's doing things that there's no other car in the world is doing, no passenger car is doing other than Tesla. Um, and so we're super proud of that is, you know, it's our first generation. It took, it took seven years for Tesla to OTA driving in urban mm -hmm. with FSD 12. Mm -hmm. It's the first time that you can actually really drive urban and you know, they're now on FSD 14, but it took seven years to get yeah. the FSD 12. Uh, and it's uh, year one OTA mm -hmm. for, for NVIDIA. So we're super proud of that. And that video is actually a true drive, you know, from uh, one spot in San Francisco to the other. It's actually a 35 minute drive. Uh, and you know we did it without a disengagement and we just kind of sped it up so that you didn't have to watch a 35 minute video but it's a single drive um, we're super proud of it great fantastic if I get into the little bit of into the meat of the things the Alpamaya model itself is a VLA model um, and how, how is it um, enhancing the safety case as compared to the traditional uh, model uh, and I, I also heard that at the moment uh, Mercedes is running both uh, models together to have like a reference point. Can you explain that a bit more as well? Yeah, so the way the stack works is you have a end-to-end -end model, you know, Alpha Mayo, and that's running on the car. And at the same time, there's a safety stack or classical stack. Um, so we could call it a classical stack or a safety stack. So that one is, you know, it has a BEV transformer for perception, but then the fusion layer and the planning and control area have a bunch of rules. Mm -hmm. uh, those two stacks run in parallel and then we kind of have a policy arbitrator that decides um, if the end-to-end -end model is giving you the safest trajectory or if you should sort of default to the safety stack. When you have a stack like that, you make sure that you're never contributing to an accident. And also you're making sure you're following all the rules of the road. Mm. Uh, you know, you should never go past the speed limit. You shouldn't cross a line if it's a, if, if it's a double solid line. It knows the rules of the roads. The safety stack also knows the rules of the road. So it makes sure you're always doing the right thing. Um, so that's the way the stack works. Now, wh why is the N10 model important? For two reasons. The first thing is, is it's trained on good behavior of driving. So think of it as like imitation learning. It's trained mm -hmm. on both imitation learning and reinforcement learning, but what it means is it drives really comfortably. When you wanna drive in urban, if you had a robotic stack, a little traditional stack, it would drive a little bit too herky-jerky. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. wouldn't feel comfortable, even though it's not making a mistake, the way that it's taking a turn, the way it's making actions, you kind of feel like, wait, it's not driving the way I would, yeah. I'm a little bit nervous. But an N10 model, actually when you're in it, you're like, it's driving exactly the way I would. And in many cases, it actually drives better because it's comfortable yeah. taking yeah. like a hard scenario because yeah. it knows what to do. It has confidence in what it's doing and it just does it. So you feel very safe and comfortable in the car. So that's one. The second thing is, is because it's a reasoning action model, even if we don't have data for a certain scenario, it can break out a problem into small steps and then it can think through a bunch of ways that it could potentially take an action and it takes the safest um, trajectory out of that. And so when you have a scenario that maybe you've never trained on, a reasoning model is great at giving you that best solution there. Mm -hmm. um, and it can actually still make the right decision even though it hasn't trained on that before. And so that's what's so foundationally important about it. And that's why this kind of model is so important when you want to get into level four type self-driving. Great. And uh, also, also another um, thing that Jensen mentioned was the open sourcing of the model itself, the simulation, as well as the data set. Yes. W what is the rationale for NVIDIA to do that? Is that uh, a way of trying to set some standard, a benchmark for the industry? Is yeah, I mean, so the, I think here it's just understanding the way our strategy, well, like what, what does NVIDIA, what are we thinking in all of these decisions? Um, so the first thing is, is, we have, we have three computers that we try to help customers with. There's the training computer, 
there's the simulation computer, um, and then there's the in-car computer. So when we open source Alpamayo, we open source the model, but you need to take that model and you need to train it on some hardware. And so we're, you know, we're selling you that hardware. Um, so we're open sourcing software, but we're, we're still helping you and when we still, and you still need some kind of a target platform to train on. And so yeah. we're helping you in, on the training side. So you have to be a customer on the training mm-hmm. side. And then same thing, we can open source Cosmos to you, uh, but it needs to run on yeah. something. It runs on RTX. Um, and so, you know, you buy that hardware. So our, our go to market is we sell you hardware uh, and we kind of give you software. Uh, but then, you know, you need to use our hardware to to run the software. Yeah. Uh, so the only place that's a little bit unique is in-car. The in-car computer is the smallest of all our opportunities. You don't actually have to use our yeah. chip in the car to be an important customer of ours. Our biggest customer in automotive actually is Tesla. Mm-hmm. They don't use our chips in the car, but they, you, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, they, they, they do a lot of trading on our platform. And so we love that partner. And so for many customers, we could say, look, here's some software. You could take it to build your own product. Um, and let's just help you with trading and let's just help you with simulation. And you don't need to use us in the car. By open sourcing Alpamayo, we're also giving customers that choice. They can actually take Alpamayo and they could distill it down and run it on someone else's computer. And that's yeah. perfectly fine because they're going to be really important training and simulation partners of ours. Thanks. And building on Matuza's question, um, I'm interested in the in the number of partners that were announced today in, in the in the uh, in the keynote. You know, how, how is it that you've sort of managed to build this, you know, rapidly build this ecosystem? Um, you know, as you say, not all of your partners are necessarily using NVIDIA hardware, but you know, they're capable of building uh, on top of these different uh, different software platforms and you know even from you know hardware through to services as well so maybe you can you know as a last question talk a little bit about what nvidia is doing there yeah i mean i think the key here is that when you want to build a level four system what's most important is safety Mm -hmm. and nvidia has been you know we have this um sort of platform we call it halos but what, what we mean by halos is it's like all of the tools and methodology and architecture to build a safe autonomous driving solution. We've taken all of our know-how and we've crystallized it across the stack from the chip in the car to the operating system, to the architecture, to the application software, to how we train and how we simulate. All of that, we've taken that safety sensibility to from cloud to car. And when customers are building level four systems, the architecture we've built for Hyperion is leverages so much of our know-how that it accelerates the work of our partners in a significant way. So the reason why the adoption is so big is as customers are taking a look at that architecture, how you have two Thors, each of them are redundantly powered, how we've architected the sensors such that if the sensors on this ECU fail, there are sensors connected to the other ECU that could still pull over mm-hmm take you to a safe space and stop. And when customers see all that work and the platform software that stabilizes that platform from us, it just makes sense for them to leverage that architecture. And we've now built a huge ecosystem of AV software companies are also building software on that architecture, right? That for an OEM, it makes sense is let me save my time, let yeah. me align to this architecture. And now also I can call 10 AV companies who can be my partners because they've all invested in this one platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's such a win-win for the ecosystem and it also brings the world to level four faster. Yeah, faster. And it's also a safer product because any learning we get from the ecosystem, we put it into the platform and the base software. And so any bugs or anything that we learn from, from all of these ecosystem partners, we just roll it back in and everyone yeah. gets the benefit of it. Very good. Thanks, Ali, for your time and uh, participating in this uh, counterpoint conversation. Um, Yeah, this is Peter Richardson signing off from Las Vegas. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks, guys.